Um, let's go ahead and get started on profits and losses. So let's first think about why some things are more expensive than others, right? So it's all about, uh, you know, it's a, it's a measure of how many people want them, right? So think about a convertible car. There, there's very many people, very many. There's a lot of people that would like to have a convertible, right? I myself, you know, I, I don't know how often I would have the top down, but I know I'd like to have the option to have the top down. That'd be cool, right? Uh, so you got to think, okay, a lot of people want these. And then you also got to think, well, if, if a lot of people want them, why doesn't everyone have them? It's because they cost more to make than the usual car, right? So why are they more expensive than others? Because A, more people want them, there's an increase in demand, and they cost more, right? So uh, things that are costlier to produce, they have a uh, supply curve that's uh, further to the left, right? So let's start talking about profits and why they're important to pay attention to, right? We can't just say, oh, let's produce what we want and ignore profits, okay? Profits, they're rewards to those that take something and transform it into something of greater use, right? Let's say I have $5 of cloth, right? And I take that and I turn it into a towel. It, that, that towel is either gonna be worth more, less, or the same, right? So if, it, if I produce the towel and the towel is worth more, I've created a profit, right? And because there's that profit, there's a highly valued good being produced, right? Or at least I'm turning it into something that's a higher value, right? I'm creating value, okay? Now I could also turn it into a towel and maybe that towel's only worth, you know, a couple bucks. Well then I, I don't have a profit and uh, I'm not making something that's more highly valued. Matter of fact, I'm taking something that people value and I'm turning it into less, right? That's not good, okay? If we keep doing that, then we're going to have all of our resources turned into things that we don't value as much as we value the resources. So. Things that have uh, high profits, right? People are going to be chasing after those and everyone's going to be wanting to produce those. And then you got to think, what about things that incur little profits? Ooh, well, you know, if something, you know, why, why go for something that has a, a low profit when you go for the thing that creates a high profit, right? So you get the idea of, you know, competition. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people spurring after those huge, huge profits. And then you also got to think, why is it that the little profit things are a little profit? Well, it could be that there's already a lot of people making them, right? Or it could be that there's not much of a reason people, you know, they're low profit for a reason that people don't really see the what's being produced for a low profit. They don't really see it as valuable. So it's, uh, it, it, we don't want a lot of people chasing after the low profit things, right? Because we'd rather than produce things that are way, way, way value, more valuable, right? And of course, you got to think, uh, going back to this, if if we think that uh, something should be produced more, then you know, action is everything. Where if we're willing to pay more, the profit will be higher, and hey, it'll be produced more. So losses, then they uh, they discipline people, right? They say, hey, you know, with me with the towels, right? You took that five dollars with the towels, and it, it you turned it into something. So you took that five dollars worth of cloth, you turned it into two dollars worth of towels we're gonna punish you because we don't want you doing that, right? You took it and you turned it into something less valuable, okay? Your towels suck and we need you to stop. So it forces me to stop because I'm not gonna be able to keep on making towels, right? If I'm selling them for less than uh, I have to buy the cloth for. So A, it's gonna stop me. And B, it's kind of a negative incentive, right? I don't want to have to uh, lose out on $3 every time I make a towel, so I'm gonna to wanna to stop myself, right? It's dissuading me from doing it, right? It's an incentive. It's one that I don't want to have to happen to me, okay? So losses discipline those that are not producing valuable goods and services, okay? Now notice, small profits don't dissuade those from making stuff, right? Right? I, you know, just because I make something for, you know, let's say those those towels would sell for $6 uh, after all my costs, right? I, I get a dollar profit. So that's not too bad, right? It's not dissuading me from doing it, but my eye may be caught by something that I can make more profitable, right? But this here, I'm gonna outright stop what I'm doing because I should not do this because I'm creating a loss, okay? So, um, let's go ahead and watch. We'll scrub through this video. You're very kind. I just realized I gotta make sure that I'm on, because I watch everything at double speed. Gosh dang it. But you got Seinfeld here. You're very okay? kind, man. And, and he's and he's talking to this man about opening a, a restaurant. Today. And when I open again, it will be all Pakistani um, I, I want to say it's a. <laughs> thank you, thank uh, you so much. You're very Some Middle Eastern restaurant. Person. I cannot remember. Very special. But in any case, tells him to open it. I so I'm just like, man, I'm so smart. I just told him to open this, and then he he opens it up. 
and there's no there's no customers around, right? It's just him, and he's visibly Hello. angry, right? You know. So you gotta wonder, you know, he says, oh, there's there's no Middle Eastern restaurants here, you should open up a Middle Eastern restaurant. So he agrees with him, and that's why he did it. And then you gotta kind of think to realize, right, because you'll notice here towards the end, if you look at what's happening, you cold? Where's your jacket? Maybe if I can find it. <laughs> oh, sorry. They're packing up the restaurant. Right? They're going out of business. They're closed. You know, I wonder why. Uh, why were there no Middle Eastern restaurants? Well, it's because people didn't want them producing them, right? There was a, there was no profit in the Pakistani restaurant, so it's it, it Pakistani Middle Eastern. I don't know. I think it was a Pakistani restaurant. It's been a while since I've seen the clip, but there was no profit in it. It shut down, and. Uh, Instead, maybe a, a, a Mexican restaurant will come in, even though there's 15 other Mexican restaurants. People really like Mexican, okay? So how do you know when to produce an item then? Well, if we put these two things together, right, you know that you should produce something when there's a profit, right? Economically, it's efficient to produce an item when there is profit, right? So let's say there's a guy named Eric, and he's making t-shirts for $10 each. They, may, they cost $10 to make, and each shirt can be sold for $12, so they make it a thousand t-shirts, you sold it $12, that's $2,000 profit, okay? So profit, this is essentially the consumer saying, hey, we like the t-shirts more than we liked the cloth, okay? So we're willing to demonstrate that by paying more for the t-shirts than we would for the cloth, right? So you're doing us a service, you're doing something for us, right? You're giving us something of more value and uh, you're being rewarded for it, Mr. Eric, okay? What if instead they were only being sold for $7 each? So he bought all the cloth for $10 a t-shirt, right? And then he had to sell them for $7. Well, that's a loss of $3,000, right? Uh, those $1,000, those those 1,000 shirts he made, right? If he spent $10 a shirt to make them and they're only selling them for seven, that's a loss. Do you think he's gonna do this over and over and over again? No, he's gonna stop as soon as he can, okay? Or try to find a cheaper way to make the shirts, right? If he can make the shirts, for six dollars now, then he'd still be able to stay in business. But shoot, is he going to be able to drop it from ten dollars a shirt to six dollars a shirt? That's a stretch, right? So, what this is demonstrating then is that the consumers are saying, "Dude, you're taking something that we value at ten dollars and you're turning it into something that we value at six. Can you knock it off, please?" So, that was six. Let's go into seven. Or sorry, that was seven. Let's go into eight. And uh, let's really talk about uh, profit. Because really when people they talk about profit, they talk about incomes, right? And people are, are wealthy. And it's, it's important that we realize why people are wealthy. Because we have this idea that wealthy people have done something to harm us. They, they've done something evil and wrong. And that's why they're better off, right? So you got to think, how do you earn an income? What do you have to do to earn high income, right? What do you have to do to get money? Well, you have to earn profits. So what do you have to do to earn profits? Hmm... Well, let's think. What did what did this dude do? This dude's very, very, very rich. He's also at the center of a lot of conspiracy theories for whatever reason right now. I don't know. People just are wild. Anyways, uh, what did he do to get rich? Well, he made what I'm talking to you through right now possible, right? The personal computer, right? And he, he mass distributed it, right? I guess there were people that beat him to the punch when it came to uh, personal computing devices. But and able to get one in every home, and he, he's really famous for that, uh, as well as the operating system, right? Windows, who boy, right? So that we, we have something easy to interface with, okay? I don't know myself, I'm a, I'm a PC guy more than a Mac OS guy, so I myself, I, I'm a fan of the operating system. So what did he do to get rich? He improved the lives of a bunch of people, okay? And we know that he improved the lives of a bunch of people because if he didn't improve the lives of a bunch of people, he would not have been able to get rich, right? Because the way trade works in a free market system or you know a, a system like ours, even though we're not perfectly free, it's still relatively free, right? The only way that he could have gotten money, right? The only reason that you, gave, that you give somebody money is because they're giving you something in return that you value more than the money, okay? And this is true across the board, right? This is true for, you know, his, the people that work for him. You know, they're giving him the the time and he's giving them money. If, if they didn't like that, they, they wouldn't be engaged in that contract, right? So what did he do? He helped people, right? That's how he made a lot of money, right? Think about me making my, you know, $40,000 a year and then think about this guy and all the money he makes a year and think about the number of people he helps, right? Me, I just help my, you know, about 100 or so students every year. Think about all the people that are impacted by his life. I mean, me, myself, I, I'm impacted by him. Can you think of anyone that doesn't get the benefit 
of the computer. Also, I mean, think about all the things that he's using with his profits overseas to do, right? Even with his profits that he's taking overseas to help uh, fight malaria, is he's still helping people, right? Um, and you could think of if any person, right, that you know of being an entrepreneur that's really rich, they got their money from helping others, right? So how do you know that you're helping others then? You could flip it on its head. Well, how did he know that he was helping others? Well, profits, right? If he was making computers and they were being produced at a loss, he would, be, he would have been taking resources that we valued and turning them into something we valued less, right? He would have been hurting us, but thankfully he was taking them from something we valued less into something we valued more, and he was helping us, right? How did he know he was helping us? He had lots of profits. And he had a few losses, right? There were things like, what, the Microsoft, they tried to have their own uh, MP3 player. It was called the Zune. Yeah, didn't last long, <laughs> okay? It wasn't, it wasn't profitable, they cut it. They were taking resources into something we valued more, something that could have been turned into iPhones and, and, and uh, you know, Samsung phones and other ways to play music, and they were turning it into something we valued less than those things. So they stopped, right? Directed them towards uh, producing something else. So this is something that we call the, uh, I guess, the, the market model, the free market model, or in this case, the mixed market model, because we have government added in. This is actually a picture from my classroom, because I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, maybe this is prideful to say, but I like my depiction of this model more than everyone else's. But in any case, we have two markets, right? A market is where things are bought and sold, right? So we have what we call the product market on the top, the factor market on the bottom, and in these markets, there's two main people trading. There's what we call households, and there's what we call firms, okay? Households is, is exactly what it sounds like, right? It's people you know, in, in their household, in their home, okay, with those that they live with, right? They own the factors of production, right? Like you own your labor, okay? Uh, you, you, you own, uh, the capital has to be owned by somebody, right? Even the person that owns the building they work in, they own all of those fact, all of that factory material, okay? Or if it's owned by shareholders, then those shareholders, in theory, they own a share of all of that capital, okay? And of course the land, right? Land, everything has to be owned by a person, right? Households. Firms then, firms are these organizations that we create, okay, in order to produce things, okay? So they take the factors of production, or not take, sorry, they purchase the factors of production and they produce goods and services. So you gotta think, hold on. So they buy factors of production, they produce goods and services. Who buys goods and services? Well, the households, they turn around and buy the goods and services. So if we look here, if we take a look at the households, guys, right? if they own the factors of production and they sell, look how the, the arrow goes to the firm here, they sell the factors of production to the firm, okay? and the money then goes back to the households. You can then see these factors of production, they are turned into the goods and services, right? The the, the land, labor, and capital, right? I, I go and work for a firm. You make goods and services, right? Maybe you go to work for McDonald's. You make some burgers and fries, which then people from the households buy. They use that to sustain themselves, and they go and they sell more to work at a firm. And we can see how these factors of production are turned into goods and services, right? My factors of production that I sell are also some, and are pretty much uh, equivalent to someone else's factor of production that I then get to buy when they're turned into goods and services from the firm. Oh, that's really cool, right? We got a circular flow model here. Here's something else that's really cool. When we have the firms, when they purchase these factors of production, well, what do we use this money for? Well, we use it to buy goods and services and we can see this money goes in to the firms and then the firms, they pay for the factors of production with money. And we can see how there is a circular flow going in both ways, right? It's kind of beautiful, okay? And then, there's a disturbance in the force. Then we have to bring in the government, right? So the government, you can see how they're siphoning off some of this money, right? We call that taxes, right? We, uh, when the government gets their share of uh, you know profits or fees, whatever, that's taxes, yeah? And, and of course these taxes, they don't just go into a, a bottomless pit. I mean, we, while, we, while we economists do like to you know, complain about the deadweight loss that's caused by government and how it, uh, can you know be more costly than what we get out of it, but we do get we get we do get stuff out of it, right? Uh, we do get goods and services that uh, sometimes you can see the government buys goods and services, right? Uh, one some one example of this would be how my school district has bought iPads, right? So those iPads then are then distributed uh, in the form of uh, I, I don't know if it's a rental or you just get it while you're you know enrolled at the school, but in any case, uh, these tax dollars that households pay, that firms pay, these are then turned into uh, a goods and service being given to households in the form of, you know, police, uh, education. Hey, that's me. Yay. Um, or 
Sometimes there's transfer payments, right? All the times firms like farms will be given money from the government. Uh, you know, just this, over the past year, farmers were really hurt by the tariff, so the government gave them money. All right, that's an example of a firm getting money. Uh, the government also gave out a whole lot of money when COVID hit in order to keep some businesses afloat. You can also see households. We also got a whole lot of money, right? Uh, you know, we normally see this with things like welfare programs, right? Um, you know, me when I was little and we had to have uh, food in the house and my mom didn't earn enough money, we got uh, some welfare money. And even, you know, everybody, not just those that were, you know, impoverished, uh, this year we got the, the COVID money, right? The $1,200. Woohoo! Yay! Um, we'll talk about the implications of that later on in this class, but this is, you can see how money flows, right? So you can see how his profits are really the spending of other people, right? And other people wouldn't be spending money if they weren't being made better off. So everything flows in a circular model. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, go on. And let's talk about how we can apply this to your life, right? What can you do then, okay? How can you earn a profit, okay? How can you earn a wage or how can you earn money uh, and, and earn more money than uh, you, know, you are right now? Because right now, probably in high school, and you're thinking, man, what in the world am I going to do? Because right now I don't like earning less than $10 an hour, right? Some of you may earn more than $10 an hour. Hey, good on you. But you certainly don't want to be, you know, earning whatever whatever wage you're earning right now. You don't want to be earning that forever, right? So what can you do to make it so you can earn more money? Well, the demand for labor depends on two things. Because you got to think, um, you can do one of two things to earn money, okay? What's up, Slayer? What, what do you need to do, right? Can you control um, the supply? Well, you, you can work more maybe, but that's not increasing your per hour, right? We're really focused on your wage that you earn per hour here. So what can you do? Well, it's really based on the demand that you can do to try to impact how much you can work for, right? So if you want to earn more, it's really about the demand that your labor produces, or sorry, the, the demand for the product that your labor produces, yeah? Now, if I'm a, if I'm looking at something that's that's low skill, yeah, there's a lot of demand for it. But you look over here, product productivity, it's not that productive, right? So you have to really balance these two, right? You got to do something that's very very productive, which a lot of the times is going to require you being specialized, and you have to do something people care about, right? Now, I I may be really really good at weaving baskets. But do people really want people to weave baskets? No, we have machines for that, right? So it doesn't really make sense for you to want to make that uh, what you want to do, your calling in life, okay? You want to do something that's in demand, yeah? You want to do something that's very productive, okay? So you gotta, you gotta think here, why do uh, professional athletes earn more than me? Aren't I doing something valuable to society being a teacher? They, you know, they just go on there and they toss balls around. And I, I'm in here in the trenches making sure people know about uh, you know supply and demand and later on in the semester about budgeting and taxes and stuff aren't isn't what I'm doing important I mean I, it's, why how come they get to earn millions of dollars while I'm living on you know breadcrumbs compared to them what that's what a normal teacher would say I'm actually really really happy with my job and how much I earn but this is why folks this is why they earn what they earn and why i earn what i earn they've been asking me to do this all day check me out one more time come on there's three reasons to pick me your move this was uh an advertisement for i, th I think some sort of fantasy football yep fantasy football there it is in this line of work you need strength as well as instincts. I'm, I'm really right curious here. what they did for these uh, check this out tricks here. Ready? Go. That's why you picked me. It's really Super cool. Bowl. Very good Super Bowl ads. It's really only two fifty nine. They hate it when I do this. Check it out. This one's clever. Cool. 
It's time to pick me. It's your move. In this league, if there's a hole, no matter how small, you gotta be able to get through it. Check this out. I think this one's my favorite. Hold on. You know it's small, good. You gotta be able to get through it. You know it's Check good when they have to bring up the disclaimer. Right? When they bring up the disclaimer, that's how you know it's good. <laughs> yeah! In your league? You better pick me. Your move. Pretty neat. Um, I'm aware, you know, Adobe Premiere exists, but <laughs> in any case, um, right? You got to think of all the people that are athletic enough to compete in professional level sports. It's a very, very small, small subset of the world, okay? Look at the number of people that can be high school teachers. There's a reason why we're not paid a lot, okay? Because guys, it's not just demand, it's also supply. There's not that many very high octane uh, people that can compete with the people that are currently professional uh, athletes, okay? And, uh, you know, Slayer brought up a, a very good point in the chat is that there's, uh, you know, for sports, there's just way more demand for it, right? They, they've got all these companies that are vying to have, you know, their name, their brand shown during a sporting game, right? How, how many people are, you know, in demand for, or have a have a demand for education, right? I mean, you guys, you go here to, to class begrudgingly. Ah, I guess I'll go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well. So, 80 million. These are, I think, 2017 for RDJ. Okay, why is it that he made eighty million and I made my half a hundred thousand? Well, again, how many people's lives have has he impacted compared to mine, right? How much more has he done to change the world than I have, right? Let's look at L. Oh, this one's a yikes! I forgot I had her up here. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> um. Yeah, we'll just go on. Okay. Oh, Queen B. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you for delivering me from this, Beyonce. Okay. 54.5 million. Why is it she makes that? And I, I don't make 54.5 million, right? I, I, I don't even make 54.5 thousand. <laughs> Jeez. Thank you for the follow, Sophia. But in any case, it's because she's made music that has improve the quality of life of so many people's lives, right? She has taken something and turned it into way more vibrant, right? I mean, imagine if Beyonce, instead of, you know, pursuing a career in music, if she would have instead pursued the career that you're currently pursuing, right, as a high school student. Well, we would be, I, I, I firmly believe we'd be in a different world, right? I think your music's that impactful, okay? LeBron James. Again, he makes the money he does because he's changed the world so much, right? And, and you got to think, I, I say change the world. Is the world 50% different because it has LeBron James in it? No, right? But it's certainly different. His life has certainly impacted way more than mine, okay? And while what I do is, well, while what I do is, well, what I does is important, okay? What what he does is, you get, you get, oh, it's not as important as you, Mr. Weaver, but he entertains so many more people than I do, right? He's way more productive than I am, okay? There are less people that can do what he does compared to me, right? There's a bunch of people that can do what I do. I just sit here and I talk about economics, okay? I guess that, yeah, that's the part I do because I like it, right? It's the working with kids that I, that I have to get paid for. No, I kid. Anyways, my point still stands, right? Way more productive, okay? And of course, I try to appeal to the kids. Is Ninja still relevant? No, went to Mixer, came back. Apparently he was still relevant when he came back from Mixer. He had a bunch of people. It was really funny. Uh, Ninja was streaming and people couldn't sub. It was weird. It was really weird. Uh, and you notice 10 million is up on the screen here. Uh, but some of you may know that he had a contract with Mixer. I think it was 25 million, his contract with Mixer. So that, that was the, in 20, oh, 2017? No, 20, 2018, I think this one was. Um, and he had that, that uh, contract in 2019 with Mixer for 25 million. Whew. Man, that was crazy. 
So this isn't even an updated number. This is out of date. You think again? He's entertained a lot of people. I've educated over over my career not even a thousand, right? If I have like what on average about one hundred and twenty kids each each year, each semester. Oh shoot! So what? Two forty. Two forty times three. Yeah, I mean, that's seven fifty or so. Okay, he he's got like what on on I know on Doctor Disrespect's return stream he capped out at five hundred k. I don't know how many people watch Ninja. What fifty thousand maybe for thirty twenty? I don't know. Anyways, uh, that's con that's 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 uh, concurrent viewers too, right? That's not the people that step in and then go out, right? So they are entertainers, right? And they entertain way more people than I do, right? Maybe if I were to become a Bill Nye the Science Guy of economics, maybe then I could make a cool one million. But until then, oh well. But if there's anything to learn, right? It's all of these people. They do have something in common, right? They all do something they enjoy, right? They all have, uh, <laughs> let's just go past that one <laughs> real quick. They all do something that uh, that they enjoy. Okay. So what you really want to do is leverage your time with technology. So that you can become more productive and increase your income. Okay, do what you can to become the most productive that you can do. Right, do the thing that earns you the most money. Okay, um, now that doesn't mean you know go into engineering if you hate math. Okay, that doesn't mean uh, as well if you're really into basket weaving. Uh, you know, go into basket weaving. Right, work something that you can live with. Right, and then do what you can so that you are uh, using your time to the best of your ability. That way, the time that you're working, you're earning the most you can, and that way, the time you're not working, you can enjoy the time with your family, right? Uh, but of course, guys, uh, becoming more productive, I mean, it takes work, right? You really gotta develop yourself if you want to make more money, you know? Yeah, and, and you've seen a lot of, uh, Slayer's talking about how, how a lot of the new celebrities, right? Uh, you could call them, uh, you know, they're all becoming kind of influencers, like even, even regular celebrities are kind of coming becoming internet influencers and you know you're kind of looking at well what are they doing they're they're taking themselves and they're allowing others to to get in on some of the you know products you know popularity that they're creating right so if i'm a if i want to advertise my product you know i can go to one of these influencers and i can pay them to advertise my project uh, product for me okay it's kind of yeah diversifying in a way yeah. So now we got to talk about, okay, now if a job for me is important, right? And I, and I increase my wealth by being productive, then doesn't that mean that jobs are what we should care about? Well, not particularly. Okay. It's not jobs, right? Cause if, if jobs were what mattered, all of us could dig holes and the world would be a better place, right? No. Okay. So, so what is it then? It's production of goods and services that people value, not just jobs. Okay. Uh, incomes are relative. Are, are, it's not relative, sorry. Incomes are indicative of production that people enjoy. Or sorry, the production of goods that people enjoy, okay? Uh, we, we oftentimes put the cart in front of the horse that incomes are indicative of jobs. Uh, and that's true, but what matters is not the job. What matters is the production, okay? And the production of goods and services that people value, not just jobs, provides the source of high living standards, okay? So, oh boy, here he is. Adam Smith is back. Okay, and uh, I, I honestly, all the quotes that I have from him in these lectures, I just assume they're all from the Wealth of Nations. They may not be. Anyways, consumption is the sole end and purpose of all production, and the interest of the producer ought to be attended only to so far as it may be necessary for promoting that of the consumer. This is what we call consumer sovereignty, right, guys? Everything is made for us to consume. Everything is made for the customer, Okay. So ultimately, in an economy, who decides what gets made? It's us, right? We complain, oh, those greedy corporations, they keep putting microtransactions in video games and we hate it. Arr. Well, they wouldn't keep putting microtransactions in video games if we wouldn't stop buying them. Or sorry, if we would stop buying them. And then there's also, oh, why don't they keep, they keep leaving out pockets. They don't put pockets in my female clothing. Well, you keep buying the clothing without the pockets. Actions speak loudly, right? So if everything's made for us consumers, then whatever consumers want, consumers get, okay? Sometimes though, through the act of marketing, we can be shown to want things that we didn't know we want. Oh, that's why a budget's important. We'll get to that later. So again, 
if jobs were the key to high incomes, we could just make something for everyone to do. Tell you what, let's have a job. Everyone in the United States would be employed through this, right? Every day, we would dig holes. Wake up, next day, fill the holes back up. Boom. No. Okay, it's not jobs. It's jobs that create value. It's jobs that are profitable, right? It's jobs that lead to production, right? It's not jobs that matters, okay? That matters. It's not jobs that matter. It's production that matters. Production of things that we value, right? We don't increase our standard of living by working more, right? If you think historically, have we always worked eight-hour days? No. People would work from sun up to sundown, okay? And we're you know, and, and we have a better quality of life today. So it's not the it's not the wanting to work. It's wanting the the stuff that the work makes that we want, right? It's it's goods and services that we can enjoy. That's what's going to increase our standard of living. Okay, not jobs, but creation of value. Okay, so let's take a look see at this broken window fallacy because a lot of the times we would like to say, oh, well, let's just have the government create jobs, right? That's been a that's been a big thing uh, with COVID, right? People are saying that the government needs to give money to these companies so these companies can stay open so that we can have jobs and money flowing. But if we're paying these companies and they can't you know, open up right now because people don't want to shop with them, are we really doing anything to help our standard of living or are we just transferring money you know, from in the form of debt into uh, people? Okay, so let's watch this video here. Many people. And uh, before this video gets started, uh, Darth was saying something you know, interesting. You know, I talked about earlier if you wanted to have a you know, better quality of life and have a higher uh, income, you know, you could do things to be productive. Another thing to do is don't live in a crazily expensive city, right? Because I want to go to California. I want to live in LA. And what, what are you going to do? I mean, the cost of living there is so extremely high. You know, live in a place, uh, you know, like northeastern Indiana, you can have whatever, you know, job you're going to have in LA, assuming it wasn't related to arts or whatever, right? If you're going to be a barista in LA, you might as well be a barista here in, you know, northeast Indiana and then be able to have a low cost of living, right? You, think about it this way. I pay, you know, let's say you pay, ah, oh, geez, $2,000 a month for rent in LA, okay? That's $2,000 gone, right? Whereas if you lived in Indiana and you paid $600, you essentially just gave yourself a raise of 1400 Anyways, that's neither here nor there. Let's go on. People argue that government spending creates jobs, reduces unemployment. Panel, headset on For so example, I can hear. if the government spends seventy million dollars on a new road or military aircraft, those projects will employ people. However, there is a problem with this government spending to create jobs theory. Economists call it the broken window fallacy. They say you might as well pay me to do this. That looks so fun. That'll create jobs. Jobs for the people who clean up. Jobs for the window repairman. And then there's the multiplier effect. Broken windows also creates jobs for the people who make the truck, the people who painted his truck, the people who deliver the glass, and so on. So let's break more windows. The government creates jobs argument assumes the money is put to better use than just fixing windows. The 70 million goes to building the road or the airplane. But unless you believe in the tooth fairy, the money has to come from somewhere. Well, it came from taxpayers. Economist Walter Williams points out that that $70 million taken from you now means you have less to spend on a new teapot or newspapers or a restaurant. That means fewer jobs for those businesses. Of course, that loss is less visible. So I'm going to stop it here. But remember, we have a word for that, right? Those taxes that the government takes in order to give it to people. You remember that economic term? Okay. Hopefully you know it. You just took a quiz over these things. But it's an opportunity cost, right? We think, oh, we'll take the money from these people and we'll use it to pay for these programs, right? Building a jet, a uh, school, right? We'll, the, the, you know, the, we'll, we'll create jobs for teachers. We can think, okay, but what if those people kept the money? Is it just, just going to sit there in their savings account? No, I mean, they would have spent it anyways. And even if they would have invested it, they would have been in, you know, it, saving it and then someone else would have been spending it, right? So we're just taking the spending from one area and putting it into another, right? That's why we call it the broken window fallacy, right? Little boy, you know, Frederick Bastiat, he writes about this. There's a little boy. He has this ball. He throws it, goes through a window of a baker. And all the crowd is saying, oh, good job, boy. You just created jobs for the, the, the glazier to come and have to fix the window. Oh. But of course, we know that that's silly, right? We shouldn't applaud somebody for breaking something that makes us less productive, right? 
Because instead of the baker having to pay the glazier to repair that, he could have invested in maybe a new person to work for him, maybe a new machine. Maybe he could have gone home and, and bought some things for, for his family, right? All of those things, now we can't do because the broken window's there. Mm, man. In the same way, uh, that tax money, it could have been spent by these families that had to pay it on other things, you yeah? know? So the jobs argument, not a good argument. You could argue, oh, well, it's a public good, in which case we'll talk about that later. But it, the, the whole creating jobs argument, there's other things that we could have spent that money on anyways. So we're just shuffling the jobs into another area. It's really a wash in the end, if not a loss of jobs. Because you got to think it costs money to go and get the money to go create the jobs. Whereas if people just spend the money, there's no cost to do that. Okay. And, and there's also the fact that, uh, you know, you got to think that if, if I'm a, a business, as Darth is saying, that uh, if I was, if people were spending money with me before and then there's a new tax, well, they're going to be spending less money on me now. Well, rats, maybe now I have to lay off a, a waiter or a waitress. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's very true. You said about uh, South Africa there. Um, and that's true for any country. No matter where you are, uh, the, the more education you have, the more that you can do to make yourself productive, the more economic opportunities you're going to have which is really gonna open you up to being able to do things uh, that'll earn you a better living. Anyways, uh, the government creates jobs. I put that in, in quotation marks there because it's not making any extra jobs. It's just the government creating jobs by taking jobs away from the private sector, right? So instead of less jobs being available in private businesses, we now have the government jobs, right? So this crowds out the private sector jobs, as I was saying, and um, there's this opportunity cost of the taxes, right? The the taxes that we take now can't be used by people to go spend on these things that the private businesses were offering, okay? And you gotta think, what's what's directing uh, the production that the government is, is having here? Well, it's not profits and losses as we talked about, right? We want profits and losses to direct um, the funding of productive projects because if it's profits, we will do it. If it's losses, we won't, right? Product, uh, profits lead to you know more production because we have, we have resources being turned into something we, we value more, whereas uh, with losses, they're being turned into something that we value less, right? So we don't, we want profits, we don't want losses, but when the government's directing these things, it's not profits and losses, it's democracy, right? It's, uh, it's, it's people voting to decide what happens, right? So it's, it, it doesn't matter whether or not it's something we value more or something we value less, it's gonna happen. So yeah, things that can be creating a loss will happen under government, whereas it would not happen in, in the private sector, or if at least if it did happen during the private sector, it wouldn't happen again, okay? Whereas oftentimes, the excuse for things not working out in uh, the public sector is because they didn't have enough money, okay? Did I reach the end? Okay, we did. Uh, the next unit we talk about talks about uh, more about this invisible hand.